The carnivore diet is a great way to lower insulin, but let's discuss other ways we can lower insulin to help speed this process along. What's Shake and Bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I've been strict zero carb carnivore for about 20 months now. And I tell you, it's really easy. Once you get over that hurdle and you get all those carbohydrates out of your system, it's easy sailing. It takes just a few weeks to a few months. But once you're there, you don't crave that anymore. And it's a really nice place to be. So I've been doing this challenge I started in September. It's a high fat, moderate protein challenge with multiple small meals a day. I'm doing that to lower my insulin. Multiple small meals lowers your insulin. A lot of people out there are listening to this right now and thinking you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to have just one or two meals a day. That way you can do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is the only way to lower your insulin. I'm sorry to say that is not the only way to lower your insulin. Dr. Fung gave untrue advice when in his book numerous times he said fasting is the only way to lower insulin. That is absolutely not true. There's lots of other ways we can lower insulin and this video is going to discuss a few of them. So being strict with carnivore is one great way to lower your insulin. But you know what? There's other ways to lower insulin. When I started this challenge in September, other people were interested in following along with me. So it's a pretty easy challenge. You take your ideal body weight, for me, 200 pounds, multiply it by 0.7, for me, that's 140. 140 grams of protein is what I get in a day. Simple as that. Now I double that 140 to get my fat grams in a day. And I take those numbers and I divide them into four. Now each of my four meals are small, moderate meals, moderate protein, high fat, and I'm doing that all through the day. You don't get a sugar spike from having multiple small meals. As I said before, they're like little speed bumps. They're like calm waters. Your insulin stays nice and low. When you have one big meal, you get a sugar spike and you get an insulin spike that goes along with that. And we want to avoid that spike because some people, like myself, have very stubborn insulin. And even though I've been strict carnivore, I've been at an eight month plateau. Now that's changed since I went from one or two meals a day down to multiple small meals. Lots of people out there that are doing this are getting these results. They've been plateaued for a long time and now they're starting to see the scales move again. That's a really good place to be. So if you wanna check out the Facebook group, the link is below this video. Now I wanna make sure we're on the same page with something. If you're not joining this challenge to do this challenge, I don't want you participating in this Facebook group. You can join but don't participate. It's gotta be there to encourage the people who are doing this multiple small meal a day challenge at moderate protein, high fat, having their fat and protein calories based on their ideal body weight. I do not think this is a long-term way to go when it comes to carnivore. Yes, the high fat is a great way to go, but I think once you get down to where you wanna be, you should slowly start increasing your protein day to day, week to week or month to month. I think once you're at a better balance with your insulin and your hormones and your blood sugar and your body can handle more and you have better metabolic health, I firmly believe you should start slowly upping your protein. You'll find out how that works for you, but that's something for later. Right now, we're trying to manage your insulin. So one of the ways we manage our insulin, like I said, is carnivore. A low carb or zero carb diet is one of the best things you can do. Even though I've had really good fasting blood sugar and really good A1C insulin tests, I still have stubborn insulin resistance. I lost a lot of weight, 150 pounds doing this. Yeah, 150 pounds, but I still have 80 to go and I've hit a plateau. I've been at that plateau for over eight months and it's finally broken doing this. So multiple meals works great. Zero carb works great. Those are two things we can do to lower our insulin. A third way is intermittent fasting. Now I'm a fan of intermittent fasting, but it doesn't work for me. So it's off the table. So a lot of people are gonna hear this video and still offer suggestions on how I can intermittent fast. I have health problems that prevent me from intermittent fasting. I have a history of gout and thyroid problems. And because of those, intermittent fasting does not work well for me. Maybe one day it will. I like the feeling when I intermittent fast. But intermittent fasting isn't the end all be all when it comes to lowering your insulin. Dr. Fung led people seriously astray when he assured them that was the only way to do it. The problem is you get such a sugar spike from your one meal a day. If you have stubborn insulin resistance, your insulin is going to go up as well and it's going to slowly come down. That's why so many people have been at this plateau for so long because their stubborn insulin resistance is preventing them from losing weight. Even though they're only having one meal a day, it's not enough. They'd probably have to fast a second day or longer just to get their insulin under control. I'm a big believer in feeding yourself to heal your body, not starving yourself. And when you're cutting one day's worth of calories down to two or three days, don't get me wrong, it works. I think there's better ways to manage it. It's not a bad way for people to go. Lots of people will get results, but if you're not getting results, 
multiple small meals is the way for you to go. We're keeping multiple small waves of sugar and insulin throughout the day in a nice safe range. So you're never hungry, you're never full. You don't get high blood sugar, you don't get low blood sugar, you don't get a high insulin response, you don't get a low insulin response. You're in a nice safe category all day long. Instead of having one big spike, that takes some people longer to deal with than others. This also helps with portion control. Yeah, you gotta weigh your food for a little while just to make sure you're getting the proper amounts of protein and fat, but within a very short window of time, you already can eyeball it and you know where you're supposed to be. I get it, The one of the attractive things about carnivore is you don't weigh your food, you don't measure your food, and that works for most people. This is a solution for people who have stubborn insulin resistance, even on a carnivore diet. The next really effective way to lower your insulin is a little bit of exercise. And you're thinking, I'm too out of shape to exercise, or I don't have time to exercise. It doesn't have to be anything huge. After each meal, you can do 100 squats. How difficult is that gonna be? 100 squats, you should be able to pop that out in 10 minutes. You might be able to do 30, and then you'll have to rest, and then you might be able to pump out another 35, and then you'll have to rest, and then maybe another 15, then rest, and work your way up to 100. You do it as fast as you can with good form. Get nice and low so that your hips are as low as your knees. And do those squats pump them out. You can close your door to your office or you can find a nice quiet place wherever you work to pump out these squats. Wherever it is you're having lunch, there's always some quiet place somewhere else in the building, maybe even in the stairwell that you can pump out a bunch of squats. Maybe you can climb up a bunch of flights of stairs. Maybe you can go for a walk afterwards. If the weather's not that good, there's a lot of indoor things you can do. You can do a little hit workout. You can do squats, push-ups, rest. Squats, push-ups, rest. You don't have to make a big workout of it. You just need to be active. That's going to lower your blood sugar and that's going to help manage your insulin response. And it's going to help prevent you from having a larger insulin response. So you add that to what we're already doing with zero carb and multiple small meals or fasting, if that's your thing. But if that's your thing, this is something you can do to help with that stubborn insulin resistance if you like the way you feel when you intermittent fast. So one of the things you can do is lower your calories. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. I firmly believe when it comes to carnivore, you got to feed yourself. Am I getting all the calories I'm supposed to in a day? Well, yeah, I'm probably getting more because I'm having a minimum of a two to one ratio with my fat. Even though throughout the day, in total, I'm getting 140 grams of protein and 380 grams of fat, I am welcome to have as much fat as I want. And I often have extra fat just for good measure. So I'm probably having way more calories than I'm supposed to, and I'm still getting weight loss, so I have no complaints. It's not all about calories. So even though we are measuring your calories a little bit right now, some portion control with your food is really good. The nice thing about this is it's shrinking my stomach. If you watch some other videos, you'll see I lost most of my weight on carnivore, having six pounds of meat a day. Six pounds of meat a day is a lot. At the time, that was about 6,000 calories a day, and I still lost a lot of weight. How is it I could get so many calories a day and still lose weight? Well, it's not all about calories and it's not all about hormones. You want to kind of find the perfect balance between the two for a while. So yeah, it does come into play. I firmly believe there's two camps, calories and hormones. And the reality is for most people, it's somewhere in the middle towards one end or the other. You got to find what works best for you. Cutting out alcohol is another good one. There's carbohydrates in most alcohols. And even if you get some that don't have carbohydrates in them, like gin or vodka, it still pops you out of ketosis. So if you're trying to lose weight, it may not give you calories, but it's popping you out of ketosis. It's still a strain on your liver. So maybe drinking is something you may need to cut out or at least drastically cut back on. You know, make a drink a treat for yourself. Make it not a once a week thing. Make it once a month thing. Because if you pop out of ketosis, it could take you days to get back into it. You're at a point possibly right now where your insulin resistance is so extreme, it could take you a long time to get back in. Why would you work all week and possibly throw yourself out for maybe three days or more because you decided you wanted a drink? Now's not the time for that. Wait till your body's healed and then slowly reintroduce that. One of the best things you can do is alleviate stress. When you're stressed, your cortisol goes up. When you're stressed, your adrenaline can go up and your blood sugar goes up. It's a natural physiological response. So think about that. Just your thinking can cause a hormone imbalance in your body. And if your thinking can cause a hormone imbalance in your body, your thinking can cause a hormone balance in your body. So what are some good things to do? Well, hobbies are a great way to go. Try and find a hobby that you can balance with whatever you're doing through the day. So if you're having a really physically stressful day, then you wanna have a mentally stimulating hobby like puzzles. If you have a mentally troubling day, maybe you wanna balance that with a workout afterwards or something active. 
a hobby that you get lost in. You know it's a hobby when you're looking forward to it at the end of the day. You can't wait to do your craft or your sport or your puzzles. Whatever it is that you do to alleviate stress, you have to make time for it. It's not a hobby if you're thinking to yourself later in the day, oh, I got to do a crossword puzzle later today. I don't have time. That's not a hobby. You want to find a hobby that you're passionate about, that you're learning about. Remember, you're not always great at any hobby you pick up. It could be picking up an old hobby or it could be learning something new. Sometimes it's fun to learn new things. You can combine a physical activity with stress management. So you don't have to make a big workout out of it or lots of little exercises throughout the day can really help manage your stress. So sometimes this is a two birds with one stone sort of thing. You're doing something to help manage your blood sugar and insulin, but it's also helping you get more active. It's helping your joints. It's helping your muscles. It's helping your bone density. Lots of these things can have multiple positive effects that ripple out to lower your insulin, but also have effects on yourself mentally and physically. So get in touch with some of your old hobbies. I think that's a great way to go. Manage your stress and everything else gets better because lots of us come from an emotional eating background. That naturally sort of gets managed with carnivore the longer you do that. But for now, you might have some difficulty sticking to carnivore. So managing your stress will help you stick with carnivore more effectively. The more effective you are with it, the more consistent you will be. And when you start getting consistent with carnivore, that's when you're going to have all the changes. And don't forget the benefits of berberine. Berberine is a natural product to lower your blood sugar. So some people take medication, metformin, to lower their blood sugar, and that helps with their insulin. You can get it online or at a health food store. I did that myself to manage insulin because I was getting these horrible gout attacks, and I found out blood sugar can be a trigger for gout problems. So even though my fasting blood sugar was great from doing carnivore and my insulin was great from doing carnivore, I was still getting a horrible insulin response from eating carnivore. There was still enough protein in my diet that I was raising my sugar enough that I was keeping my stubborn insulin resistance alive and well. So berberine helped manage that that little bit. You just take one with every meal. If you take that and you're already taking a medication to lower your blood sugar like metformin, talk to your doctor. Always discuss taking something like that with your doctor. Even though it's natural, you don't want to interfere with your current medications. So there's a few extra things you can do to lower your insulin. And that's not even everything. Those are just some easy things you can start implementing day to day to manage your sugar and insulin. Lowering those numbers helps pop you into ketosis. The better you're in ketosis, the more fat you're gonna lose. When it comes to exercise, try doing them earlier in the day when your blood sugar is naturally higher so that you can use that activity to lower your blood sugar that much more. Like I said, if you're interested in joining the Facebook group, you're more than welcome to. Just try and follow the rules. I'm really strict about the rules. I don't want any foods that are mentioned off a carnivore diet. This is a strict zero carb carnivore group. If it goes well, I may open it up afterwards so it's not a temporary group because a lot of people seem to really enjoy this group. Thanks a lot. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Thanks a lot and take care.